Hey everyone, new year, new video, a couple of counters, got these from eBay, what more could you ask for? So calibration, why is it important, why do we do it, and how to protect yourself from the sticker shops that are out there. So with that said, I got one, uh, one dodgy one and one good one, and I got them both from eBay, seems to be the premier choice. Um, sometimes I use eBay, sometimes I just go to a reseller and say, I need a piece of kit, do you have it? Oh yeah, I do. Talk about the price, get it. Okay, yeah, I want it calibrated, um, and move on. So, how do you know that 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 the kit's good? Now, with these two counters, um, the reason I picked the counter is because I could simply throw 10 megahertz into it from my uh, uh, GPS-based um, discipline oscillator, and, um, and you know, see if I get 10 megahertz on them or how close I get to it. So. One is uh, a trustworthy cow and the other one is not. Stickers aren't worth anything. Don't look at that. So that one is, um, yeah, not so good. This one is dead on the money. Not surprised. So that said, like I said, stickers aren't worth anything. They're just there because that's when it was done. Um, this one, of course, has a QR code on it. So, you know, you, you zap it and it... Uh, it's probably and more than likely the serial number of the unit. Um, that said, um, you know, how did I know that beforehand? So you look these guys up, you never find them. Neither of these instruments had any stickers on them in the listing. They both said that the calibrations would be provided upon purchase. In other words, they would do the calibrations when you got it, which makes sense. Um, that's how most everybody operates. They're not going to do it until you buy it because the thing could be listed for three weeks and nobody buys it. And well, what are they going to do? Redo it? No, of course not. So um, they'll do it when it's purchased. So that, of course, you got to keep that in mind if you need it quick because it's going to add to the time. But they are upfront about that because you can't just throw these things on a table and um, 20 minutes you're done. You know, they, they take time to stabilize and uh, a lot of times they'll usually let them run and let them cook for 24 plus hours. So uh, to make sure that the uh, ovens have stabilized because they, they take a while. Um, they're usually up to temperature in 15 minutes, but they, they take a good long time to actually stabilize. So that said, how do we know the labs are any good? So the reason you get things calibrated is because you want accurate measurements. You want to have trust in your measurements. You want your customers to have trust in you because you have trustworthy gear. So it's really about uh, the accuracy and the, and the trustworthiness of the measurements. You want to make sure that your measurements are correct, and that's a good thing. We want to make sure that um, a centimeter here is a centimeter there. Uh, standards are a good thing. Calibrations are a good thing. Traceability is all a good thing. Watch Dave Jones' videos on it. They talk about that in depth. So, again, as you could see, I plugged in my GPS discipline oscillator into these counters, the one that was cowled by the good lab, uh, we agree. Um, this one we don't. So I have no idea what they used for this. Um, so let's take a look at the certificates uh, and see if they're even worth the paper they're written on. Because again, anybody can make a certificate just like anybody can make a sticker. Now this is about as dodgy as they come. Three pieces of gear, uh, uh, an Agilent counter, um, uh, a 33220A, I forget what that is exactly, um, and some true time thing, which is gonna, I've heard of the true time. I think that's a, um, um, uh, what is that thing? Um, Symmetricon, I think. Anyway, so here's, let's look at the other one. Okay, so another one, oh, fancier piece of paper. Um, you know, great, you know, fancy colored paper, you know, but hey, um, again, is the paper worth anything? Anybody can make, like I just said, anybody can make these certificates. Anybody can. I can sit there and word in three minutes and get some fancy paper from Staples and yeah, I've got it. Uh, easy. So how do we know? So if we're going to trust our measurements, we have to trust the lab. We have to trust that the lab is doing the right thing. Now how do we do that? Well, we get third party verification of the lab. That's where ISO conformity comes in. So these guys, through Perry Johnson, are um, uh, they have their uh, ISO conformity. Somebody's come in, checked them out, um, and again through Perry Johnson, 
they have gotten their accreditation, which says that these guys are adhering to uh, ISO IEC 17025. This was a 15 page document, so all of the uncertainties and other measurements, equipment, so on and so forth, personnel are documented in the lab in the other pages. So we have that. That means a third party has gone in and checked this lab and because they have done that, they're not just saying whatever they want you to, whatever you want to hear, and they certainly, uh, you know, are not doing uh, anything but what they're saying. So we can trust, you know, we have a certain degree more of trust in this lab versus a lab that doesn't have this. Because if you deal with a lab that doesn't have this sort of stuff in order, well, they could say anything they want. They could say, yeah, we're traceable. Yeah, we have all of this documentation. And they may very well have that documentation and everything is in order, but nobody's checked it. And there we back to the trust issue. We want to trust our measurements, trust our gear to tell us the right thing. But if we can't trust the lab because somebody, there hasn't been any kind of third party verification, well, then you're just kind of throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So it's really kind of pointless. Um, you could do it and you could be fine with it, but uh, why would I, I wouldn't trust it because uh, it pe some people in my position can't. Uh, I, I work in, an, in a lot of fields where I have to verify that stuff. So if you can't produce this, I can't trust it. There's also no regulatory bodies that are simply going to trust your uh, unaccredited lab. Uh, because they, there's nobody that's backing that lab up. They're just over there over by the lonesome. Nobody's checked it. Nobody's verified it. And they can say whatever they want. And there's no, um, uh, no regulatory body that's good. Not, not FCC or Industry Canada. They just had a few years ago, they had the big uh, culling where the non-accredited labs, uh, like these, these people would be, the sticker shops, they were basically um, uh, you know, tossed out the window because they said, we're not going to deal with this nonsense anymore of non-accredited labs. They were probably having measurement anomalies because nobody was checking these guys out. And they're sending these documents into FCC and FCC is expected to approve these um, devices with these um, not unverified uh, results from these labs. It, it just, it became too much of a problem. So they basically said, no, we're going to only accredited labs. So the regulatory uh, authorities have basically just said no. And that called a lot of these guys out. Uh, and and uh, now there's um, the only ones that seem to manage to survive usually are on eBay and they're usually selling gear. And this is what you end up with. Um, and this is what you want to avoid. So if you want to have trust in your measurements that you're providing to your customers or you're giving your customers your assurances that you have uh, everything in order, you have to go to really go to accredited labs. Can you use those other ones? Yeah, you can. But then again, that's like I just said. You're getting your equipment calibrated because you want to trust it. But if no third party is verifying that other lab, how can you? Nobody's checked it out. So um, be careful, guys. I mean, be careful. And, um, you know, let me know what you think and. Uh, you know, if you uh, uh, find an issue um, with a lab, uh, particularly one that's claiming conformity and they're not, you really need to report that. Uh, A2LA, they've got report, a reporting mechanism. Perry Johnson has a reporting mechanism. If you think that you're dealing with a lab that uh, is claiming it, they're, they're accredited and that they can't produce it, uh, report it. So that said, guys, cheers for now. Till next time.